Hey, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Daniel. Um, at, like a year ago, I started my first job in tech uh, and we use Ember, like solely as our app. So uh, in this talk, I'm gonna be talking about uh, my experiences with Ember over the year and some of the cool things that I found about it. Um, so yeah, so that's me, some of my background. I'm a, currently a junior front-end developer um, at a startup in Cambridge. I am on like a placement year from university, so I've been yeah here over the last year on placement, and this is where I discovered Ember. Um, I work for a company called Repositive. Um, we're in Cambridge, and we're building like a, a web platform for genomic researchers to share and collaborate on data. Um, yeah, so, so last year when I joined the company, we had an existing Ember app. Uh, it was on Ember 13. Um, and we had a pretty small team. There was only, other, only one other Ember developer at the time. Um, so this gave me a lot of pretty cool opportunities to jump in and play around with the Ember app. So yeah, some of, some of my experiences uh, jumping into Ember in the first place. So at, at this time, I didn't really have much experience as a JavaScript sort of framework developer. I, I just had some small uh, web experience with Bootstrap and jQuery and things like that. Uh, so jumping into Ember was quite a challenge and a bit different, but yeah. So um, one of the things I discovered quite early on was the fast release cycle of Ember. And when at the time, it was around last August, the Ember 13 had just sort of been released and we were just updated. So a lot of the resources I found online, um, I was learning things and it was quite difficult to tell what had been deprecated or not. So that was quite a, maybe a hindrance at first, but yeah. And obviously we all, we all know that Ember has pretty strong opinions and as a junior developer, this is quite a difficult thing to jump into. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so the conventions of Ember are pretty, pretty strong um, and they are very difficult to jump into as a beginner. But once you, once you get going, and you know how everything flows, you, you have a pretty strong idea of how to build your apps in the first place. So uh, everything starts in the URL, uh, which is mapped to the router, to a, to a route, which loads in your, which you can call the model hook and load in your data, uh, which you then can render into the templates and render components from there. Um, yeah, so the first, the first real challenge, I guess, in my Ember experience was embracing the conventions and, and learning the opinions of Ember so I could use these to best utilize, utilize them. So yeah, they were difficult to understand at first. But once I started getting uh, comfortable with Ember CLI, uh, you get a really strong project structure. You can generate the, the objects you need easily. And you, you, just, you can really understand how you should be building your apps. And you can get to a stage where you're building pretty complex apps when you're still a beginner. You don't, you're not really an expert. Um, which makes you feel pretty great to end up dancing around like Tom York. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so the second sort of uh, point, I guess, this is something I really liked about Ember, is that you can, you can kind of base your development on route-driven. So you have like uh, states of your app and you get your mockups from your designer uh, and you can work quite closely with this and you can build your applications based on, on that state. And this is really nice because you, can, you already know which routes you need and how you can structure your app that way. And then you get your architecture as that. So you would have um, every sort of state defined inside one route. And it's pretty cool. So I guess for example of this and some of my things, this is like a experiment I have a sketch. Um, the example basically is like a sh small books app. Um, and yeah, so, so this is the author's route. Uh, the router slash authors. Uh, so you have like a list of authors on the side which you could theoretically search through. And then inside you'd have the content zone um, where the, the books would get rendered into the outlet of the authors. Um, and then again, the next, the next mockup would be the list of books through the, for each author. Uh, you define that with the author's ID as the, the dynamic segment and then uh, the books route in there. So, so you would list out all of the books for that, that author in this, in this mockup. Um, and then next, you would have the individual book as the thing. Um, so this is the, the single book uh, route with the book ID as the segment, and then you just display that. So you would, you would 
um, be able to tell just from your short mockups like um, what routes you need. And you don't need to really make assumptions on how to build this. You just sort of already know that you need four routes and you can nest them inside each other. So your router would look something like this. Um, and it's really clean and easy to understand. So you'd have the authors, an individual author uh, with an author ID, then your books inside that uh, with an individual book. Um, and then you can build your templates and controllers around this. And this, this for me was something that I really, really liked early on and it helped me to um, you know, jump in and definitely know what I was doing uh, without much experience, which was pretty cool. So uh, something I had so uh, issues, I guess, with at the beginning was the idea of data down and actions up. Um, so this is the, the premise that like your data flows down from your root into your controller uh, and then down into the components. And then your actions would be sent from the component up to the controller, up to the root, um, which you would use to update the, the values of the data there. Um, so that kind of looks something like this. Your root has the, uh, calls the data, passes down to the component, passes down to the con uh, controller to the component. Um, and then when you would like, if the component has an action to mutate this data, you would send it back up uh, the other way. Um, yeah, so this, is, this was something I had issues with. We had lots of components that had like several layers deep of components. Uh, so it was quite a strong hierarchy. Um, and it was quite hard to keep track of where this data was going and where you would be sending it and stuff, um, especially when you're bubbling actions up several layers. So uh, again, an example from the, the books app from before. Uh, on the books route, so each individual book, uh, you can imagine that each, each book here is a component and inside this, like a book item component, and inside this, uh, book item, you would have the, the cover of the book which links to the individual book and a nested component for a star rating which the user can uh, update the rating from one to five stars uh, outside of the, the route so you could do it straight from this component. Um, so if I walk through the example of this, you first you would need to return all of the books um, and you would display a book item for each book. Um, and you pass the data down into the component uh, as book equals book, and this can get all of your records. So next you can start building the component. And as, ex as I would expect, you can define the markup for this. So we have like a link to the book, the, the book cover, and a star rating component, which is then passed again the, the book object. Um, and it has an on-click action to set the rating uh, from a max rating of five. Um, so you would expect to be able to define the logic here and set the rating so you could pass in the, the book object and set the rating and then save it to the model. Um, but as I found out after several experiments that this doesn't really work, so you end up <laughs> a bit confused. Um, so a solution for this, well, the solution for this is you send the action up from the component. Um, and so here, you back in the book item component, you send the, the, the object up um, to a action in the controller called update rating. And in the, in the controller, there's the, again, the logic from before, where you simply save the book rating and save it to the model. Um, yeah, so th that's a simple example where you, you're nesting it, well, you're passing it up two layers, but as, I found out before, if you have several layers of this, it can get very confusing and I got lost many times trying to do this. Um, so finally, once you've done this, you can pass the, the action to the component call. Um, so here we give the book list or the book item uh, component the update rating. And as you can see, you, the user would be able to click and update the rating here. So yeah, that, that would be the working workaround of the data down actions up. So um, another strong point for me uh, being uh, an Ember developer over the past year was the community. Um, uh, especially like events like these, I like, felt very included. Um, it's very active and I definitely learn a lot every time I come here and to Ember Camp and stuff like that. Um, I've also had some really great experiences with some of the like, maintainers of add-ons. If I've ever had an issue, 
people have been you know more than happy to jump on Slack or a Skype call to help you out and get you out. So that's been one of the, the strong points for me uh, as an Ember developer over the year. Um, so yes, yeah, so this just sort of summarise the the lessons I've learned over this um, over my career as an Ember developer. Uh, the first would definitely be to embrace the conventions. I, I guess this is the the, le the first learning point for any Ember developer, uh, especially um, with the lack of experience I had before. Uh, learning this was a strong point, and you know you you jump into building the apps very fast once you've understood these. Um, so yeah, you can feel pretty experienced without really the experience. Uh, the second lesson um, was following the root, root uh, driven patterns in your design. So you can work really strongly with the designers again. Um, and I like the idea of being able to turn mockups straight into roots and it's just a nice flow. Um, and again, the data down actions up flow. Uh, this was one of the more confusing points for me. Um, and once I got this, I was, yeah, much happier. And again, being more involved with the community, um, you know, it, it's, it's really helped. And I, I definitely think it's one of the, the main reasons why being an Ember developer is pretty great. So, yeah. Um, so I guess more about the future. Uh, I'm excited to see where Ember goes. And there's been some pretty cool developments recently. Uh, excited to see what happens with rootable components. And uh, Glimmer, the work that's been happening recently with Glimmer 2 uh, has been pretty exciting. Um, and again, staying involved within the community and being a part of this is, is really cool. So, yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> We've got time for some Q&A if you want to field a few questions. Sure. Um, so I had uh, some issues with our Ember Simple Auth package before, uh, and Marco was more than happy to. He jumped on a Skype call with us and helped us out, and that was pretty great. Uh, and I've spoken to like uh, people from Dockyard on Slack because uh, they have obviously many, many packages <coughs> and got some pretty cool assistance there. So, yeah. Sure. Um, well, the, the Ember guides are pretty great now. Um, they're probably the best place to start. Like, there's a whole walkthrough of every sort of concept of Ember. Uh, there's a few blogs like Ember Igniter and Program with Eric, which I use quite heavily. Um, they're pretty cool. Um, yeah. Um, Ember 101 book suite. Yeah. Online. Yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, what's um, so it's a rendering engine. It basically improves the performance of the rendering of like the HTML bars uh, templates. And there's been a lot of work on that recently. Okay, let's have another hand. <laughs> 